Hello little dreamers, welcome to this new video. Today we're going to delve into the adventure of Draco, the dragon, and Laura, the bunny. Once upon a time, in a faraway kingdom, there lived a fearsome dragon named Draco. With his fiery red scales and his eyes as piercing as embers, he was the most powerful and frightening dragon the villagers had ever known. Every time he took to the skies, a wave of terror spread through the villagers, who rushed to take refuge in their homes, closing doors and windows to escape his fury. Draco liked to be feared. He fed off other people's fear and found a strange pleasure in their distress. From his perch on a cliff overlooking the villages, he watched with satisfaction the panic he provoked in people. I am the king of terror, the master of nightmares. He said with arrogance. But deep down, Draco felt an emptiness, a sense of isolation that he couldn't ignore. One day, while flying over a village, Draco spotted a little bunny called Laura, who was crying. Intrigued by the huge sobs on such a small face, Draco decided to fly down to her, spreading his huge wings. Well, little bunny, why are you crying so loudly? Little bunny looked up at the dragon and, having recognized him, she hesitated before answering. My little brother Noah, he disappeared when we went for a walk in the forest. I'm so sad. I don't know what to do and I can't find him on my own. Draco, used to fear and crying, felt a strange sensation. When he saw Laura crying in search of her little brother, it aroused an unusual emotion in him. Draco was touched and understood that Laura was sad because she loves her little brother so much and she couldn't bear to see him missing. He found himself wanting to help Laura find her little brother. I'm sorry about what happened to your little brother. I can try to help you find him, if you'll accept my help. Laura looked at Draco in astonishment. She was surprised by the mean dragon's proposal. She dried her tears with a shy gesture and hesitated for a moment before answering. Really? But you're an evil dragon. Why would you want to help me? I know I have a bad reputation, but maybe I can change. Can you show me where your little brother disappeared to? Laura, feeling a glimmer of hope, accepted Draco's help. They set off to find clues and follow the trail of the missing little brother. On their quest, Draco and Laura crossed vast expanses of lush meadows and explored mysterious forests. As Draco and Laura went deeper into a mysterious forest, Laura began to talk to Draco, trying to understand what lay behind his evil nature. Why are you so mean to people, Draco? Don't you want to be loved and have friends? Draco lowered his head and sighed. It's true, Laura. I have always been feared, shunned, and judged purely on my dragon nature. But deep down I feel a tiredness of this lonely and frightening life. I want to know something different. I want to be loved and accepted for who I really am. Laura stared at Draco with eyes full of compassion and understanding. I can't imagine how difficult this must be for you, Draco. People are scared of you because of your evil dragon nature, but I think there's more in you than what they see. Draco lowered his head, his misty eyes reflecting the sadness inside him. He had never known anyone to speak to him with such gentleness and understanding. Laura, placing a comforting paw on Draco's scaly arm, smiled at him. You can't change overnight, but if you really want to change, you can. I have faith in you. Draco looked away, fighting the conflicting emotions that were overwhelming him. He'd been mean for so long that he didn't know how to be anything else. But there was something special about the way Laura looked at him. She saw him not just as an evil dragon, but as someone who had the potential to become more than that. As their journey progressed, they met other creatures from the kingdom, but instead of frightening them with his dragon nature, Draco tried to reassure them. 
He spoke softly to them, showed them that he could be friendly, and listened attentively. I won't hurt you, I promise. We're looking for my friend's little brother. It's a little bunny. Have you seen it go by? The animals, who had been frightened at first, began to realize that behind Draco's fearsome scales lay a heart full of kindness. Draco looked at them with a new perspective. He was amazed at how happy these animals seemed, despite the challenges they faced in the wild. During their journey, Laura and Draco got to know each other better. They shared stories, laughter, and moments of complicity. Draco began to feel more and more at ease in Laura's presence, gradually revealing aspects of himself that he had kept hidden for so long. Every minute spent with Laura opened his eyes to the beauty of the world around him. Draco realized that his journey with Laura was not just about finding his missing little brother, but also about discovering himself. Finally, after many hours of searching and following the clues left by Laura's little brother, they finally spotted him, with a paw stuck between some rocks. Look, Draco! We've found him! You found me, Laura! I'm sorry I won't wander off on our walks again, I promise. But Laura, what is Draco the Bad Dragon doing with you? Don't worry, Draco's nice now. It's thanks to him that I've found you. Draco used his strength carefully to move the rocks and free the little bunny. Laura hugged him and smiled. Watching the scene with a tender smile, Draco felt a deep sense of satisfaction flood over him. He had done something good, helping not only Laura, but also her little brother. Thank you, Draco. Because of you my little brother is safe. You've been so kind. You're not as bad as you think. Thank you very much, Draco. Draco was touched by Laura and Noah's words and felt a glimmer of change in his heart. Thank you, Laura. You showed me that I could be better and that I could change. I don't want to scare other people anymore. I want to be loved and have friends. Draco made a big decision that day. He had lived in the shadow of his reputation as an evil dragon for so long, but it was time to change that. He wanted to be loved and accepted for who he really was, not just for his dragon nature. Back in the village with his new friends, Draco began to show his new kind nature by protecting the villagers and helping those in need. And so, the evil dragon Draco began his transformation into a loving and understanding being, learning the importance of empathy and friendship. Draco was now making friends among the animals of the kingdom. He had become a benevolent protector and a loyal friend. The whole kingdom was astonished by Draco's transformation and a new legend was born, the legend of the dragon who had learned empathy and discovered friendship thanks to a little bunny with a generous heart. End of story. Thank you for following this story, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to put a little blue thumb, subscribe, and click on the notification bell for new adventures. Stay curious and keep dreaming. See you soon on Tales, Adventures, and Kids.